my name is Luke Garrity, and I am a pastor theologian in Northern California, and I have a really a great privilege and honor today to have with me a guest, and his name is Bob Fulton, the man, the myth, the legend. Bob, um, for those the of you, the apostle, the apostle, the emissary, <laughs> the anointed healer, um, Bob uh, has been a part of the vineyard um, in what I would call the folklore, you know, the legends. Uh, Bob is actually, well, it was related to John Wimber. Uh, Bob's wife, Penny, is married, or <laughs> is the sister of Carol, who is married to John. So, brother in laws. That's Got the, it. I guess the best way to put it. Uh, and so, we're going to spend some time today talking about the vineyard, early history. I'd love to pick your brain on like going forward in the future. Um, so, I'm so honored to have this opportunity to sit down with you. You know, when I was in, um, I just thought about this in New Zealand last year with all your. Uh, spiritual sons and daughters would be a good way to put it. I kept hearing about Bob Fulton, and I was like, "You guys know Bob? I didn't even know he like still comes out. You know, he's a legend." And <laughs> and they just sang yeah. your praises. So I'm just so honored that you'd be willing to sit down and do this. Yeah, but see, they told me about the great Luke. <laughs> Next to the gospel writer, there's Luke Gary. Oh yeah, <laughs> right. So uh, anyway, yeah. So uh, how did you? I guess, you know, maybe for us, you know, so we, we have some viewers and listeners who are either new to the vineyard or outside of the vineyard and are just friends of the vineyard and uh, kind of maybe curious about how the vineyard started. Um, so kind of like, how did you come to a place of faith and how did you get suckered <clears throat> into this this thing suckered that we, we're there. all doing? Yeah. Fine print. I didn't read the fine print. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I like to tell. I got suckered. <laughs> I got suckered into this. Yeah. Well, uh, I grew up uh, in Wisconsin, and I know you spent some time there. <clears throat> so I was a beer-drinking, perverted punk, that's how I tell people, and uh, never heard about Jesus. I was 19 years old, went to the U.S. post office to deliver a package, started walking out the door, and there was a sign, uh, sunny San Diego, California, U.S. Marine Corps, and I went right in and signed up, very patriotic. And uh, when they, uh, well, I mean, they put us in a room together. There's probably 200 guys. And, you know, you're always looking for somebody to cover your back because uh, you start saying, you know, the crowd wasn't that, especially Marines, they weren't that nice. And uh, so this guy started befriending me. His name is Dave Kovacs. And after a while, he started telling me about Jesus. And, and uh, so I... I wasn't real thrilled uh, with his who he was. He's sort of a geek in my mind. Uh, but there were uh, a bunch of us that he was starting to uh, witness to. And then uh, one of the guys' name was Ed Higgins from Red Bluff. Uh, and Ed accepted Christ, and I thought, oh, that's interesting. Uh, so I started <clears throat> seeing that happen. And then we uh, came up from San Diego up to Santa Ana, California. And, uh, and there I met, uh, I had a sergeant uh, named Lee Harvey Oswald. The? The. Oh, man. Guy. Weird, weird guy. So you know what? I just got to point this out, that uh, there's all these Forrest Gumps of the vineyard. Have you heard that? <laughs> like uh, Mike Turgiano. Yeah. Because he was always there when all these crazy things happened, you know? Uh, so that's kind of like... I your... was going to write a book once. Uh, I was there. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> you took my title. <laughs> no, I haven't. You can still use it. That's, you should write that book. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so... Uh, but Dave witnessed to Lee Harvey Oswald, but we used to do have beers and stuff together. He wasn't uh, uh, whatever uh, he turned out to be. But <clears throat> to me, it was just interesting because I started... Once I became a believer, I realized... This is all about being history changers. Mm. My history changed. Ed's history changed. Wow. What would have happened if Lee Harvey? We, 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 don't, we don't get the witnessing thing, mm -hmm. but it's, it's about changing history. Wow, that's really good. So I mean, that's kind of a, a worldview um, perspective, right? Like right. seeing that not just about getting people, quote unquote, saved, but yeah. actually changing the course of history, yeah. individuals and then collectively, right? Because mm -hmm. if, if he had become a follower of Jesus, Think how that could have impacted. Boom. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's really, that's good. That's powerful. Who knows what, what yeah. would have been. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it, it really gets into the story of when John and Carol became a believer. Uh, so anyway, I, I grew up in the Marine Corps. We 
can talk about that another time. But uh, uh, see, I didn't grow up in church. My first 14 months as a believer. Anyway, we, uh, okay, went back. Uh, my squatter went to Japan, and that's where I accepted Christ. I was uh, that was 1960. I was 20 year old. Finally made sense, and uh, so these guys raised me, and uh, I had been introduced to the Friends Church, long story, through Dave before we went to uh, Japan. So when we came back, uh, I came <clears throat> to Santa Ana. All the other guys were sent to different parts of the world mm. that had sort of raised me, 14 Christian guys. So I went to the Friends Church, uh, finally became the, the uh, uh, pastor of fifth grade boys. You did. <laughs> and just for all of our listeners... The oh. Friends Church uh, would be like the Quaker Quakers. tradition, yeah. but that particular Friends Church, that particular Quaker church was an evangelical uh, Quaker's church, correct? Well, at that time, the, they, they had what they call yearly meetings mm -hmm. by state. The Ohio yearly meeting, California yearly meeting, Oregon yearly meeting were all evangelical. The okay, were, yeah. Okay. And just, I say that because... You know, a lot of people don't, when they hear Quaker, Quaker. they think, because there's so many different the hats. types. Of, yeah, 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 yeah. So it was it was pretty similar to, like, a, I guess, a, uh, just an evangelical church of the day, because I know yes. there was a lot of evangelism happening, for instance, in that church. There was yeah, well, actually, there was a guy at the time, Bill Freeman. They called him Your Belinda's Billy Graham. Okay. The guy was, a, it was great at leading people to Christ. So anyway, <clears throat> uh, so I was doing fifth grade boys, and one of the families I connected with, uh, it was Dick and uh, Lynn Hine. Dick was the drummer for John's uh, jazz band. Oh, okay. Who did the Vegas circuit. Pretty wow. impressive band back then. <clears throat> and uh, John's best friend. And so through Dick and Lynn, I heard about John and Carol. Uh, and they were just John and Carol. They weren't John mm -hmm. and Carol Wimberg. Because yeah, you didn't know about Penny yet. Didn't know about Penny at yeah. all. <laughs> this is before that. Yeah. BP, as I BC, call it, before BC, Penn. Yeah, before <laughs> BP, BP. So anyway, uh, uh, they invited John and, uh, and Carol to question. I had heard, because it was a small church, about uh, Gunner's Bible studies. And uh, one of them, at Dick and Lynn's house, John and Carol became believers. And uh, <clears throat> so then I got, I was sort of aware of them, but not really, because I was, I was pretty young. Uh, John is six years older than I was. So anyway, uh, they accepted Christ. And long story short, after uh, uh, John and Carol accepted Christ, then uh, this guy, uh, Gunnar Payne, who was the leader of the Bible study, he was a, a welder, a oil, uh, uh, a oil platform worker. I sure got the name Gunnar. It had to do with what he did on the oil platform. But uh, <clears throat> he... Uh, about, he would go and knock on doors and say, hey, if you want to learn about the Bible, I'll, I'll talk to you. And so that's how Dick and Lynn got involved. Then John and Carol's whole story about being there, and then John falling on his knees, and he wasn't, playing, he wasn't praying to the plaster anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he yeah, started yeah. crying. Yeah, that, that, he that came one. to a place of faith in that yes. space, right? Yeah. <clears throat> and then uh, uh, Gunner left. Uh, I, knew, I knew Gunner real well, and... Uh, so uh, John then started uh, leading uh, people to Christ. Mm. Let me let me pause for a minute just for Gunner. Okay. So, you know, growing up in the vineyard, I know I know about Gunner. I know about Gunner, yeah. and it's been said by many people that there wouldn't be a vineyard if, vineyard if it wasn't for Gunner. Or mm -hmm. you know, there's a number of people that have. Uh, by the way, this podcast is brought to you by Dasani Water, mm -hmm. and we want to just let you know my favorite. If, if you want to send us money, you can. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, no, but so Gunner is this really influential guy amongst many people who go on to be pretty, uh, I guess, pretty Im impactful for the vineyard movement. Um, he, so from when I heard, I guess in the folklore, um, he had had a tragedy in his life. A terrible thing had happened to his daughter, I believe, right? She had been murdered. Mm -hmm. um, and he just, um, I guess, continued pressing into Jesus and his faith um, and went on to lead, like, Thousands of people to the Lord. That's kind of the the, the what, what what I hear. Yeah. Well, he'd been led to Christ by some Quakers okay. in New Orleans, <clears throat> and so you know the Quakers really believed believed 
uh, you know, what the Bible says, and so and they try to live it out and practice it. It wasn't as much about believing as it was doing. Mm. So anyway, so I come here in, in 1960. Uh, two years before that, uh, uh, yeah, Gunnar's daughter, Ruby, uh, who was about uh, 15 years old in his pride and joy, was babysitting for a neighbor. Uh, and Gunnar and, and his wife were out to dinner with that couple. They came home and found his daughter had been raped and murdered uh, a guy with a hammer. Oh. Wow. So it's pretty bloody. And so then they reported to the sheriff, and the sheriff then got a posse together. And Gunner, this, this is true, uh, he was part of the posse, and he had two other guys that he was assigned to, and he prayed and said, God, let me find this kid. These guys will hurt him. Which I thought, wow, how could you do that? Yeah, wow. So anyway, and sure enough, they went out in the hills near Blinda then. There were no houses. And uh, they found him, and they brought the kid to the sheriff. And then uh, Gunner went to the sheriff and said he would like to go to jail, to the jail, and to witness of this kid. And uh, wow. the, gunner, the sheriff said, you can't do that, and he, uh, you, you'd hurt him. He said, if I want to hurt him, remember, I brought him in. Mm -hmm. So he finally led the kid to Christ. And uh, he was the last one uh, killed in the gas chamber in the state of California. Wow. And Gunner pleaded with the court not to uh, sentence this kid yeah. to death. So, that, I mean, so all of these. So this was, this was, what was all over Yorba Belinda. <laughs> which hit John and Carol Wimber and, of course, yeah, yeah. everybody. I mean, yeah, what I, I, I just know that his, um, the testimony of Gunner, you know, is like the power, it's powerful, very, very powerful. Yeah. So that was how many years before John Wimber enters into Gun, Gunner's, you know, Bible study had that happened? Two years. Okay. So fresh. It's still fresh. It's fresh. It was your blend. I, I entered into it right away. Yeah. I mean, because I know in small towns, you know, Red Bluff's a town of 15,000. It's a small town. And when tragedies happen, it's, it's still there years later. Yeah. You know, so that was, that's fresh. Wow. Well, we, we didn't even have a grocery store. Mm. We, we had one of those drive-in dairies. Yeah. Everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. That was our grocery store. So it was a real small community. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's changed. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's changed. Yeah. Um, so, so Gunner uh, has this amazing faith in Jesus. Then he would go out his faith with and everybody. just knock on doors and and yeah. uh, uh, and then talk he to and then he leads Jesus. Or he leads uh, John Wimber to Jesus, essentially in that Bible study. Right. And then uh, John starts to ask questions about like when do we get to do the stuff? Well, that was from the past. Yeah, the pastor of the church. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's that's later. It wasn't Gunner necessarily. He learned all that stuff. From Gunner's Bible study, and then started asking. No, he just read the John and Carol. Mm -hmm. Always, they just started reading the Bible. Okay, gotcha. I mean, every day they would read the Bible. Yeah. Their theology was developed through just reading the scriptures. Okay, yeah. so they knew. They're like, hey, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all these followers of Jesus are, are they, doing these things. Right. Why are we not doing these things? Yeah. Gotcha. So he went to the pastors, and. Uh, so not, <clears throat> I was going to Biola at the time, so was, we were, uh, I was a more conservative evangelical. Yeah, so okay. the stuff, the question John was asking, uh, I didn't hear about it at the time. Mm -hmm. We heard about it later. Yeah. And and no, no, I'm, skip, I'm skipping, so let's back up. No, he just wanted to know. Yeah, so you have come to faith. You, um, you're following Jesus. You're part of the, the Friends Church. Friends Church. The Yorba Linda Friends Church, mm -hmm. uh, Quaker, Evangelical Quakers. Mm -hmm. John, and, uh, John and Carol come to faith, right. and they're part of Gunner's Bible study. Mm -hmm. You're uh, now pastoring a group of fifth and, you said fifth and sixth graders? Well, I was just, I was you're the, the, the Sunday school, school teacher. teacher. No, I'd take that title. Oh, pastor, yeah. You need to get those titles. They're important. Because <laughs> uh, once you get in the vineyard, yeah, yeah. you don't get those anymore. Right. Um, so that happens, uh, and then... How does it like? Well, that was my connect. That's why I knew them. Yeah. So yeah. what 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 year is that at? That was 1962. John okay. and Carol. Yeah, so this out. is this is still roughly 18 years before the vineyard kind of mm -hmm. you know comes into being. What happens over the next 18 years? Well, first of all, <clears throat> um, Penny, then uh, uh, John and Carol start witnessing to their family, 
and they all thought they were weird because they came out of a, a Catholic tradition <clears throat> and they didn't understand the language John and Carol were using. Uh, but then Penny was a, a you know, typical party scene. So she called Carol and said, hey, you guys go to church all the time. Uh, New Year's coming up. I don't want to go to the parties. Mm. Uh, wow. stuff. So Carol said, oh, yeah, we've got something, not knowing if we did. Yeah. <laughs> so then she's the one that, <laughs> that checked with, <clears throat> with uh, Dick and Lynn because I, uh, they loved me because they're, they had fifth grade boys. Oh, uh, okay. That was my connection. Yeah, yeah. So uh, they had Dick and Lynn call, call me and ask me if I would chaperone their, uh, her sister. <laughs> Which you were fine with doing, apparently. Well, actually, I had a, I was a, I had a, a girlfriend. Oh, you did? In, so this is good. In Biola. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And so, uh, but she was part of this Job's Daughters, and so they were doing this thing for Biola, uh -huh. and so they weren't part of the New Year's Eve thing. So I said, sure. And I still remember that dread dress. Penny had dark hair. She all tan, yeah. red dress. You were in. <laughs> so anyway, uh, actually, after that, it was the pink leotards. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was the 60s. So, so uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I, I took Penny, but I was part of a group called Bachelors Till the Rapture, and I wouldn't uh, date a uh, unbeliever. Oh, yeah. So you know in me. the context of American evangelicalism, everybody's waiting for the rapture to happen. That's right. Yeah, it's the late, great planet Earth. The late, great planet days. Earth, yeah, yeah. Chuck so, Smith, Yeah, Alan don't even Z. worry about going to college. No. That's a waste of your time. Right. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. So you were, you were committed to being a bachelor until the rapture until Til. you started realizing... Yeah, yeah. Hey, Till the red dress. She's a pretty, pretty lady. <laughs> That's great. Anyway, then she uh, uh, starts asking questions, and then she uh, uh, sat down with Gunner uh, uh, about the third week of January, and she accepts Christ okay. as her Savior. So, just for listeners again, Gunner leads uh, Penny. Penny after, and uh, he had also led John and Carol, Carol to the Lord. Right. So again. There would be no vineyard if it wasn't for Gunner this history-changing man named Gunner. Yeah. yeah, that's amazing. And so then I decided to uh, disciple her. Mm. And uh, you so were so you're so, such a servant. Wow, well, look at you being I willing am, to. <laughs> I am just serving God to, yeah. to disciple this pretty girl yeah. in a dress. <laughs> but but uh, she was living with John and Carol at the time. Okay. And so John and Carol couldn't understand why I was staying to one in the morning. <laughs> I bet you John, I feel like John may have known. <laughs> but when they, they finally got it that uh, I was, you know, passionate for her, they went in and prayed that we'd get mm. married. Okay. So um, wow. that was a big part of our story. Yeah, yeah. So that was all in the uh, 62, 64 era. Okay. Uh, and then John, and then Gunner left, uh, partly because uh, this, you know, he and his wife were, were trying to be faithful to Christ, and they were. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, for his wife, she, she just yeah, couldn't I, get over the ruby thing. I, I can't imagine. Yeah, it's I mean, a, it, it's, yeah. So anyway, they left and uh, the Bible study, and he turned it over to John. And John had been a Christian maybe two years. Mm. And uh, so then John uh, started doing that. I'm going to Biola at the time. But I heard about John because he was leading people to Christ. He's the same thing with Gunner. Mm -hmm. you know, monkey see, monkey do. Yeah. I mean, he was discipled by he a disciple, disciple maker. Yeah. So he... Because he, he <clears throat> saw other people become Christians. Mm. John then, uh, because he was a musician, John was in that, uh, that angst between uh, what I'm doing doesn't really line up. Because he was used to the... What do you call it? The toilets, you know, the mm -hmm. bars they yeah, play yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's playing and, clubs. He's seeing yeah, the drugs, the yeah. random hookups, and the, just that whole culture. That whole culture. Yeah, gotcha. And so it starts, so the, the, I mean, we would say the spirit's starting to work in, yeah. in his life. Okay. Yeah, he's had conviction. Yeah, okay. And so um, somehow the, you know, the spirit of God spoke to him and just said, you can't do this stuff anymore. He also had developed a group at the time called Righteous Brothers, which, you, which a lot of you that are younger wouldn't have heard of. But they uh, were but kind of a big deal. 
They were kind of a big deal because there was a group called the Beatles. Yeah. They were just <laughs> starting, and they're going. They wanted yeah. them to be the front group for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, but John had, John was, uh, his. If you ever go through any of his uh, videos, it's "I'm a fool for Christ." Mm -hmm. Who's fool of you? Yeah. Are you? Uh, the pearl of great price was huge for John. John was all in. When yeah. he made a decision, yeah, yeah, he's not like a lot of Christians. They're, they're sort of wimpy. Yeah, I mean that's why I think with a lot of when I've listened to you know a lot of Wimber stuff and read all of Wimber's yeah. things, I mean the concept of surrender was a was a pretty pretty big significant thing. Yeah. Um, so hey, we're going to talk about John Wimber in a little bit here. Okay. <clears throat> um, you know, because I want to I want to start asking you some questions about what he was really like mm -hmm. and get the scoop. You know, never before seen footage, but. How, so you're you're going through the regular routines of discipleship. You and Penny end up getting married. Mm -hmm. um, you're you're being mentored. You're also mentoring people. Bring us up to like from 1965 to 1978. You know that kind of that phase right there. Because I know John Wimber uh, be, he became a pastor, mm -hmm. which we'll talk about in a minute here. And he was also and then eventually to te he's teaching the uh, the famous class at Fuller Seminary as part of the. Um, the uh, MC5. yeah the uh, but it's part of the uh, school of evangelism um, school of world missions. missions yeah world missions and evangelism stuff yeah. Pete Wagner yeah what what's what are you doing what are you doing in that period well time? yeah my story is uh, see again I, I was discipled by these uh, by these Marines and I and I, I thought what church meant is you get up at five in the morning you get together and you wor you worship horrible sound of the Lord mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> those guys. Uh, then uh, they would pray for, for people, uh, and then they would do a little uh, devotional. And so uh, they taught me that worship was important. They taught me how to pray. Uh, it was, you know, they taught me how to read the Bible, mm -hmm. how to study the Bible, part of Navigators. They taught me how to witness. Uh, and I thought that was what yeah. the Christian life was so all about. So you were basically being a faithful disciple, yeah. just doing the stuff. Just doing it. Yeah. So I came back here, and then I asked, uh, where's the prayer meeting? Where's the mm -hmm. witnessing? And well, we don't do that. Oh. And uh, so for me, uh, I, I didn't know any better. So I was going to, um, I, I have two graduating classes. I was kicked out of the high school. Okay. And so because of that, I've often suffered. I don't have a real large vocabulary because, <laughs> uh, you know, School is important, yeah. <laughs> and I, I didn't take school seriously. So anyway, uh, 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 I, I went to I had to go. I wanted to go to Biola College because uh, Dave Kovacs uh, and those guys all said I should. Mm -hmm. But uh, Biola would let me in because I had a. They, they actually kicked me out of high school. Uh, one point seven GPA and gave mm -hmm. me a. They gave me a certificate. So I had to go to uh, uh, Fullerton Junior College. And when I was there, uh, they had a, a Christian club on campus. I went to it a couple of times, but it's sort of geeky, uh, in my estimation. But anyway, uh, I went to the last meeting of the year, and they said, we want you to be president. And I said, well, if you want me to be president, you guys have to understand something. What you do, I don't want to do. Hmm. Uh, why don't we go out? They have a beautiful four quad, all, all these oak trees. Everybody's out there. Uh, doing their stuff, uh, and so I said, we, we will go outside this room, out into the quad. So we did, and uh, anyway, we started, uh, they said, what are we going to do? I said, well, we'll have a Bible study, and we'll go witnessing, and uh, take you outside your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, <clears throat> people, you know, would pray, and they'd throw oranges, and this was, this was back when what's happening now on the campuses was happening then. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. whole thing. The you know, I, re I remember when <clears throat> all seventeen thousand windows were smashed at Berkeley, mm -hmm. riding on campus. And yeah. All that. So it was it was an anti-establishment uh, attitude. Yeah. So anyway, so in doing that, the group started growing and, and grew up until to about eighty people by the end of the year. Next year, there's two hundred and fifty. Well, the people the <clears throat> the French Church heard about this thing I was doing on campus. It's just discipling, making disciples, mm -hmm. witnessing people making disciples. And uh, so then they asked me to become the youth pastor. 
that's before people knew what one was. Okay. So, so you, you became... I was on staff okay. before John... Gotcha. That's the connection. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. how I got gotcha. Then John yeah. became associate pastor. Okay.